here we go. Welcome to tonight's Zoom. Uh, thank y'all so much for getting on here. Thank you for being consistent. Uh, I know uh, Fields of Faith is happening with Legacy students, so we're super excited with that. Anytime we can get churches or youth ministries together, uh, I believe it's, it's phenomenal. My goodness, let me see what I can do here. There we go. Nope, that's not good. I need to be able to get people on. There we go. So um, uh, question for you. Has anybody ever experienced like outstanding above and beyond customer service? I'm talking like the kind of experience that uh, caused you and made you want to be a customer for life. Anybody ever experienced that? Yeah? Yeah. You know what? Go ahead and do this because I think we have a little bit of time tonight. Go ahead in the chat and, and uh, type that in who it was. Now, we're going to be talking about something very similar to this in just a moment, but let us know um, who it was. Come on, somebody. Put in here. I'm going to put in Abby. Whoa, not that one. I'm going to put in uh, Abby Printing because they're always just going above and beyond. We love ourselves. Some Rip and Debbie rocking and rolling for us. KFC, Brooke. All right, there's an unexpected one. That's awesome. Ooh, Princess Cruise Lines. Kim, I like it. I like it. See, this is the advantage of you guys who are here live. Some of y'all, if you're watching via video, you don't get to see this, but I'll do my best to uh, make it known what people are sharing. But uh, one, ooh, a cashier at Walmart. Um, one time that was Jason. Um, we just had, I want to share with you a little story and maybe that's where some of tonight came from, but, uh, we just bought our van at Howdy Honda. I had purchased my Honda pilot there. We had a great experience, uh, before, but this last time with the van, it went above and beyond. It was absolutely phenomenal how they treated us, what they did for us, especially, uh, Tony Franklin, who was the financial guy, some of you who, who follow football, he was a barefoot kicker for the Philadelphia Eagles and the New England Patriots, and even for a short time, the LA Rams. And uh, my goodness, he took care of us in just a fantastic way. And um, we were just blown away. And we're just like, you know what, uh, from here on out, this is where we're buying a car, and then if uh, any of you go, I'll help you out. We'll go down there, and Tony Franklin will take care of you. He won a customer for life, and I was thinking about that uh, this week um, because this sort of thing is really burning in me uh, as uh, – uh, Pastor Abram and Kim could testify to just this whole customer service being excellent, going above and beyond. Uh, it's huge for us because what could happen uh, if every one of us, just the few that are on this call, if we live this way, what could happen in our church if each of us served this way week in and week out? What if that became the culture of Legacy Church. I see Discount Tire USAA, Matt on the Legacy AV team, uh, UFCU, the, the credit union, and on and on. What if we went above and beyond for everybody who came through the doors of our church, including our regulars, not just being on the lookout, you know, because a lot of times we're on the lookout for our guests, but what if we uh, were really uh, just going above and beyond even for each other? Can you imagine? I really, I want you to think about this. Can you imagine the difference that we could make? It would open up when we serve that way, it would open up people's hearts to the word of God. It would open them up to the move of the spirit of God. It would make them feel so welcome. It would make them feel so wanted that they would be far more likely to return and get consistent in their attendance. And then they, they would also uh, be far more likely to get involved in a life group. They'd be far more likely to get on uh, the dream team. And they would be far more likely to invite their friends to church so that those friends 
friends could have the opportunity to experience God in much the same way. And it would make us a prime candidate for a move of God. And that would help us multiply our growth and our ability to reach our city, to reach our community, to reach this region. And that is the goal. And so I want you to put a one in there. If you believe like, Pastor Doug, I want to help make that happen because listen, this is it. This kind of customer service, this kind of mentality is a must if we're going to fulfill the, the vision of our church so people can experience, live, and leave a legacy. I know it doesn't sound very spiritual. Thank you, wonderful people, for those ones. We're still waiting for some others. But... Um, um, it, it may not sound very spiritual, but the reality is as a church, we're in the customer service business. I know it doesn't, you know, it sounds kind of sometimes a little, bleh, but thank you, Mark. I believe that you're a servant, man. But people come to church looking for it. We say this in starting point all the time. They're looking for it. They're looking for a place to belong. They're looking for a place to connect or else they would never bother coming to church. And so when we commit to going above and beyond uh, when our customer service, I'm talking is top notch, a number one, five star. It makes a far greater impression than you might think. And so let me ask you, I'm going to have you type again a couple of things. When you think of excellent customer service, who do you think of? What business? I know some of you guys, you, you said you had a great, a great experience. I did at Howdy Honda. But who do you think of when you think of exceptional customer service? Can you go ahead and type that in? I'll wait for just a second. Go ahead and type away. Uh-huh. Disney. Oh, Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A. Is anybody out there? Discount tires, man, I agree. That's the place I go for tires every time because they've always done me right, always treated me right. Do we have anybody else? There we go. Summer Moon. That's because there's a few great, awesome people there who work. The Buckle. I don't know, man. I just, I, I'm not from Beverly Hills, so uh, I'm not sure. But okay, I'll, Jason, Disney. Whoever iPhone is, I'm not sure. Summer Moon. Wow, that's good to know. I'll make sure I let Allie know. Disney. Anybody else? We got anybody else? Three, two, one. I think of Disney. I do. You guys know if you've been around me for any time at all, uh, when it comes to not the entire Disney company of nonsense, but the Disney theme parks, the Disney amusement parks, I just uh, look at them. They've been a source of inspiration uh, for me for a long time. And one thing I just read uh, that when Michael Eisner was the head of Disney uh, in his, and I'm talking like the head of Disney, now it's Bob Iger, but when Michael Eisner was the head of Disney in his job description was trash pickup. And so he stated that, that if there was a piece of trash within 60 seconds, somebody, no matter who they were, no matter what their position was, uh, within 60 seconds, somebody would pick up that piece of trash. And he was walking around with somebody and he dropped a piece of trash and they just kind of watched and bam, almost immediately somebody picked up that piece of trash. And so they just ooze excellence. It's all about being great. And it's just like, I want us, and I've said this and Kim can attest to it from the very beginning. I want us to be the Disney of churches when it comes to our customer service, when it comes to our commitment to excellence, when, I, when it comes to our commitment to really just having a wow factor. Now the next question is, and go ahead and type it in there. When you think of lousy customer service, who do you think of? Walmart, Walmart, Dollar Tree, McDonald's, McDonald's, Lowe's, wow, okay, isn't that interesting, anybody else, five, four, three, two, 
one. The IRS, come on, come on, come on. Whoever iPhone is, you won the night. The worst customer service. And now you know what? I'm going to get audited, because knock on wood, because uh, uh, the IRS is everything you imagine them to be, every caricature of poor customer service, they are it. But I think of Walmart, you know, uh, we go to Walmart because they have great prices, not because you're looking for anybody to serve you in any way, not because you're looking for, heck, an employee to be around the store that knows where anything is. But if you've ever been to Walmart and there's somebody who uh, goes above and beyond, it really stands out. And a lot of times people come to churches and they've experienced several churches who they don't have good customer service. They don't have good people skills. They, they don't even act like uh, they care that you're there. And then they come to a place where even the customer service is mediocre. It stands out. But what if they could come to Legacy Church and they would be blown away with excellence? And so uh, understand, we've said from the beginning, leaders are servants. See, great leaders, and that's what this is about is developing you into a great leader, not just in church, but tonight the context obviously is in church, but it, this works for work. It works as a parent. It works as a spouse. It works as a, as a student, but great leaders learn to go above and beyond. They go the second mile. They, they go to the nth degree. They serve sacrificially. Understand it's in us to be great. No one wakes up in the morning and says, you know what? I think I'm going to be mediocre today. That's not how it is. There's a desire for greatness. There's a desire for significance in every single one of us. And that desire comes from God. It's not, it can be an unhealthy thing if you take it, you know, too far because truth taking the extreme becomes error. Those godly desires taken to the, to the extreme can become error. And it can be so easy to lose sight of what godly greatness really means. You think about Jesus, man, he was with his disciples 24 seven for three plus years, and he was constantly having to get them realigned, constantly getting them realigned and, and help them, you know, point them true north to what greatness really meant. We th everybody knows the story of uh, J uh, James and John. They were asking Jesus for positions in the kingdom. Sorry, I grabbed the wrong Bible. Uh, they were asking them for positions. They were asking Jesus for a position in the kingdom to be sit on his right and sit on his left. And I'm sure Jesus was like, these guys aren't getting it. Still, they're not getting it. And this is how Jesus replied in Mark chapter 10, verse 42 through 45. So Jesus called them together and said, you know that in this world, kings are tyrants and officials lorded over the people beneath them. But among you, it should be quite different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even I, the son of man or the son of God, came here not to be served, but to serve and give my life as a ransom for many. Another translation for that says, he who is greatest among you will be servant of all. And so if you're going to be a great leader, you, hey, you have to develop good people skills. But then also, you have to be willing to humbly serve, even when no one's looking, even when you don't get the credit that you think you deserve for serving. You have to know that God sees it all and God is keeping score. What I wanted to do tonight is to read this story, uh, and maybe you've heard it before, maybe you haven't, but I'm going to go ahead and read it. Y'all still with me? Give me a thumbs up if you're still with me. This story, I believe, will inspire you and encourage you in this whole thing to not just be great at customer service here, but in whatever field you're in. Um, it says, uh, on a stormy night many years ago, an elderly man and his wife entered the lobby of a small hotel in Philadelphia. Trying to get out of the rain, the couple approached the front desk, hoping to get some shelter for the night. We'd like a room, please, the husband requested. The clerk a friendly man with a winning smile looked at the couple and explained that there were three conventions in town. He said, all of the rooms are taken, but I can't send a nice couple like you out in the rain at one o'clock in the morning. Would you perhaps be willing to sleep in my room? It's not exactly a suite, but it will be good enough to make you folks feel comfortable for the night. When the couple declined, the clerk insisted, don't worry about me. I'll make out just fine. 
So the couple agreed to spend the night in his room. As he paid his bill the next morning, the elderly man said to the clerk, you're an exceptional young man. Finding people who are both friendly and helpful is rare these days. Think about that. Well, I can't tell you the era yet, but it's even more rare in these times. You're the kind of manager who should be the boss of the best hotel in the United States. Maybe someday I'll build one for you. Two years passed. The clerk was still managing the hotel in Philadelphia when he received a letter from the old man. It recalled the stormy night and, it, and enclosed was a round trip ticket to New York asking the young man to pay him a visit. The old man met him in New York and led him to the corner of 5th Avenue and 34th Street. He then pointed to a great new building uh, there, a palace of reddish stone with turrets and watchtowers thrusting up to the sky. That, he said, is the hotel I'd like for you to manage. The old man's name was William Waldorf Astor. And the magnificent structure was the original Waldorf Astoria Hotel. The clerk who became its first manager was George C. Bolt. This young clerk never foresaw how a simple act of sacrificial service would lead him to become the manager of one of the world's most glamorous hotels. The way, uh, the way to top notch, the way to the top with people is not just through service, it's through extravagant sacrificial service. When someone goes out of their way to help you, it makes all the difference in the world. Come on, you never knew, know who you're serving. You never know if the next Billy Graham is coming through our doors. You never know if the next TD Jakes or Reinhard Bonnke is coming through the doors of Legacy Church. And they might have been rejected everywhere else. They might have been hurt somewhere else. Understand, people are the way they are for a reason. You never know. And so that's why we want to have sacrificial, extravagant giving. But some people might not buy into serving like this because they think people are going to look down on them, you know, if they serve like that. And so really it's a struggle with pride. They don't want to be looked down upon. They think uh, really they've been taught that leaders are the ones who ought to be served. And it may that be that way in the culture, but it's not that way in the kingdom of God. I love what Pastor Gary Washington said. Uh, he was a senior associate pastor at Victory Church where, where uh, I cut my teeth for a lot of years. He used to say, race to the bottom, destination, service. And that was the goal of leadership. The goal of leadership was to race to the bottom, not race to the top, race to the bottom and the destination. You knew you were doing it right. You knew you'd arrive if you were serving well. And so again, in the, um, in the uh, uh, chat, uh, who is the person that has served you more than anybody else in your life? Who's the person that has served you more than anybody else in your life? Ready, go. Grandma, mom, my mommy. I love it. Donna Simmons, that's mom. Mm. Jennifer, spouse. Anybody else? There we go. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Mom and dad, there we go. Mom, Simmons, yeah, wow. The Kinnies. Mm. See, there was a consistent, uh, Matt said mom and dad. Um, there was a consistent theme throughout all that, and there were some variations, uh, but at the end of the day, most everybody would say their mom or their parents or their spouse who is a mom and on and on. Uh, most moms serve their kids in astounding ways. I know my mom did. If I were to share with you some stories, and maybe someday I will, but I would like to do it publicly so my mom gets the praise and the credit that she deserves. My mom was stunningly uh, humble and extravagant in her service, in her laying down her life for me and for my brother. But think about this. Do you think less of your mom for serving you or more? 
of her. You know, my guess is that your love and your respect for her goes up when she serves in sacrificial ways. And it really, it's no different with us. Think about this now. When we serve others, our influence increases. When you serve people, your boss, your classmates, your coworkers, your influence increases. The famous leadership guru, Zig Ziglar, is famous for this saying, You can have everything in life that you want if you'll just help enough other people get what they want. You can have everything in life that you want if you'll help another another uh, if you'll help other people get what they want. And I know it's ironic. You'd think that true influence comes through force, you know, through ordering other people around, through making sure that everybody knew you're the boss. And I'm sure we've all had had bosses like that. We've had leaders like that. But the reality is the opposite is true. Real influence comes through humbly serving others. It's one of the greatest leadership paradoxes in existence. Think about the night that George Bolt served Mr. Waldorf and his wife. He didn't know who they were. He didn't see, you know, kind of like, well, what are they going to give me in the future? He just chose to honor every single person who came through the door. And so when you take the path of honor, your influence is going to increase on your job, in your ministry, at your work, in your, you know, at your school or whatever it may be, even if you don't have a formal leadership position at your school, your work, or even here at Legacy Church, you can still influence others. Listen to what Martin Luther King Jr. said, uh, and then we'll wrap up. Everybody can be great because anybody can serve. You don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your subject and your verb agree to serve. You only need a heart full of grace, a soul generated by love. Everybody can be great because anybody can serve. You can be great because you can serve. You know, this whole thing tonight, the Waldorf principle, if you will, reminds us that the way to greatness is through sacrificial and extravagant service. I want to share with you two more stories real fast. We'll pray and then I'll give you an action step. Hmm, I wonder what the action step will be. But listen to listen to these stories. There are two stories uh, regarding how people served extravagantly and sacrificially after Hurricane Katrina hit in 2005 in New Orleans. Um, <clears throat> After that natural disaster, thousands of victims were displaced without uh, a home or food. Many Americans left their own comforts to serve them, at times at great expense. Listen to these two. Marianne Burnham was a nurse who wanted to serve the victims in Louisiana. Her hospital wouldn't give her the time off to do it, so she quit her job. Serving the less fortunate was more important to her than her job. And then Ryan Devon left Chicago to serve folks after the hurricane. How did he pay for his trip? He sold his World Series tickets, the tickets to watch his own Chicago White Sox play in the World Series for the first time in 80 years. He had never missed a White Sox game in 30 years, but he sold those World Series tickets so he could serve others who were in need. Extravagant? Sacrificial? Absolutely. And that's the key to greatness. If you want to influence others, which is leadership. Leadership is influence. What on earth just happened? My goodness, I apologize. Something just happened with that. I thought I cut everybody off. How's that for an anticlimactic? Ending. If you want to influence others, which that's what leadership is, remember George Bolt. Remember the Waldorf Astoria story and take the path of a servant leader. Legacy, Zoom, let's live this way. Let's go above and beyond. I know uh, in areas in our church, you know, last year about this time, you know, we had just relaunched and we were hype and we were ready. And it seems like in certain areas, we've kind of come back to more of a, it's okay, we're all right. And we, we've lost that. 
And if I could get the 15 or 18 of us that are on this call tonight, if we could begin to help create a culture of extravagant serving, I believe we would see something magnificent take place. And I believe it would be attractive to others so that when other people are asked, hey, when you think of outstanding customer service, who do you think of? And instead of Disney, it'd be Legacy Church. Instead of Discount Tire, Legacy Church. Instead of those, Legacy Church, man, I am up for that. Sounds good. Let me pray. And then I'm going to give you an action step and we'll talk here in just a moment. Father, in Jesus name, I thank you for everybody <clears throat> who's on this call. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would put it in each one of us to serve and serve well and to serve extravagantly. God, to bless and God, go above and beyond. God, what others may seem reasonable. Holy Spirit, I pray that as we pray for the lost and as you fill us with your love for them, God, that we would just desire to serve. God, not just at church, but everywhere we go, that we would be servants. God, he who is greatest among you will be servant of all, that we would just be servants of all. God, that we would uh, take the path of honor and we'd be servant leaders, that you would multiply our influence. God, and as we serve this way, God, that this would become the culture of our church. Make this the culture of Legacy Church. God, we commit this to you and we praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> so here's, here's the uh, action step because true service is always going to cost us something. It's going to cost us time. It's going to cost us energy. It's going to cost us effort. It might even cost us money. But this week, write it down. Don't forget, I'll try to remember to put it in the Legacy Zoom uh, to remind us. But I want you to perform one act of service for somebody else. One act of service, but instead of just doing the bare minimum, I want you to go above and beyond. For, for example, don't just tell somebody you appreciate them. Take them to lunch. Take them to dinner. Do something to bless them. Don't just maybe clean their room, clean their bathroom as well. Don't just show up, you know, if you're serving in Legacy Quest. Don't just serve up and, and, and be nice to our kids. Show up prepared and show up ready to give our children your best. You know, don't just maybe write them a nice note. Write them a bunch of notes and put them in places they wouldn't expect. Are you follow me? Does that make sense about just going above and beyond? Buy them a cup of coffee. Instead of buying them small, buy them large. Instead of buying them drip coffee, buy them the winter moon, you know, or something like that. Yes, it is going to require some time. It is going to require energy. It's going to require thoughtfulness and maybe even some money, but that's what this is all about. And then after you're done, take some time to reflect on the experience. You know, think about what you discovered through the whole process. Sound good? I'm going to go ahead and unmute everybody and I'm going to stop the recording, but I just want us to have that mentality. You're going to be hearing it no matter where you serve. I just want this to get ingrained in us. So then when we uh, go to Buddha Halloween, we're serving this way. When we're uh, at church or we're at freedom or at our life group, we're serving this way. Amen. Let me get the